Friend and Foe Adventure Co. is an immaturely mature podcast. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. Previously on Friend and Foe Adventure Co. A business partner of mine, Amir, found four vault hunters to help him with his Don problem. After they thwarted the Don's right-hand person, Nettie, from grabbing guns from Amir's armaments, he sent them to Randy's Brew Inn, my place, to see me. I gave them intel on a few of the Don's operations, which they went and messed them up. But on their way back, they were ambushed by two of the Don's jackbots. They made quick work of the jackbots, though, and returned to me quickly. I had received intel that Nettie was caught and taken to the Sheriff Torium, and that in the morning, one of the Don's fancy lawyers would show up to get her released. The Vault Hunters headed out into the night and went to the Sheriff Torium, where they eventually talked their way in and were able to take Nettie and kidnap her, bringing her back to my place. But before stowing her away, she told the Vault Hunters that the Jackbots would never stop hunting them unless the Don called them off. She also mentioned that in the morning, the Don's only daughter would be getting married. And it's customary for the Don to grant a favor on the day of his daughter's wedding. In the middle of the night, someone came into the Vault Hunters' rooms and left a severed Saurian head in their bed. Everybody but Phaleon woke up with a Saurian severed head in their bed. That is, I feel like a, I'm Dr. Seuss right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you all are meeting up for breakfast downstairs. I don't know. At the, you're all at the bar. Are you just drinking for breakfast? Are you eating? Are we <laughs> definitely drinking for breakfast. Uh, are we bringing the Saurian heads with us? Just have them sit next to us at the table. <laughs> Are we going to let room service handle that? I I think we need to have a word with Randy about how such a thing was allowed to happen. Like, the security yeah. in this place is obviously not very good. <laughs> I feel violated. I want to speak to your manager. Yeah. I'm wearing mine on. like a sock puppet. Hey, guys, how's it going? Wonderful. Randy comes up the stairs. They had taken Nettie down there, and so they're coming up the stairs and see you up at the the bar and see his good boy with a severed head on on his hand. <laughs> kind of rolls their eyes a little bit, <laughs> and then comes up and says, "Oh, I heard, I heard that you. I'm sorry. I'm not sure how Mr. Key's people got in here." And then they're interrupted. By someone at the table behind you. Tharian heads aren't a warning, they're a promise. Tharians ain't cheap, and to behead four of them to scare you before he kills you shows just how serious he is. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't keep a straight face. Well, not that I have a face. It is a claptrap unit rolling up behind you. What do you know about it? Uh, nothing. Randy says, I'm sorry. He has a way for you guys to get into the wedding. And his price was, was, was this. <laughs> That's right. It was me. I put the Saurian heads in your bed. You've just been pranked. You're a, you're a little twat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> But my name is actually Stevio. I'm a model STV 1.0. Lovely. Ah. That name's familiar. Did we meet this claptrap? I really don't know. <laughs> yeah, that name is familiar. Huh. God damn it. It was like no. the first episode, wasn't it? Oh, it was... Uh, no, it was last episode. It was last episode? You're kidding He's the me. one that did the, 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 the prison guard thought was doing a prank. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, so you haven't met him. No. We have heard the name. Okay. I had nothing in my in my notes about Stevie O. I was like, <laughs> why do I know that? You've heard tell of this Stevie O prankster. That was great. You guys can keep the Tharian head. Uh, I've got a way for you to get in, and it's going to be so good. But you got to do me some favors once again. When, what do you say? What's your favors? Well... 
uh, uh, Mr. Keith bans me from his, attending his daughter's wedding, so I'm going to need you to pull off some classic DVO pranks. Such as? Well, uh, I'll tell you once you're in. So I'll connect to your echoes, and I, uh, I, I may have dealt with the wait staff. Uh, they've been permanently delayed, and I've acquired their uniforms. You can put them on, head over to the Red Herd's mansion, and I'll echo you with the instructions on what I need you to do. Then once you're finished, you'll be free to ask the Don for your favor. Yeah, but if the Don catches us pulling pranks, he's not exactly going to be inclined to uh, grant us any favors, is he? That's it. I mean, don't get caught. Oh, good plan. You're master vault hunters, aren't you? Legend. This should be a breeze for you. Now my sneak skill is only one. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's fourth wall breaking again. Um. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm fine doing it. I'm always willing to help the school poltergeist. <laughs> Uh, I mean, this is obviously the only solution that Randy could come up with as well. So maybe we should just do it. Yeah, works for me. Yeah, they say it's it's going to be the easiest way in. I can tell you that. I was talking to, you know, having a very polite and civil discussion with Nettie overnight. And she said that Mr. Key probably doesn't actually know who you all are, except for good boy. But she doesn't. But he wouldn't know that good boys betrayed him yet. That I what? (laughs) (laughs) That you betrayed him. Remember how he helped you escape from jail and then and then you backstabbed. I I believe what I believe what Randy's talking about is you know when you were waiting to go into wizard school and the bad wizards came along. Yeah. Yep, yep, I I remember that. I do remember that. (laughs) <laughs> so I don't think you'll have to worry about any of that because he hasn't seen any of your faces except for Good Boy. And Good Boy wears a mask. And now a tie. And a shirt. Did you give him the tie back? <laughs> I reckon I did, yeah. Okay. Nettie also explained that the the Jack Pack, they don't report directly back to... Mr. Key until they finish the job. So there's a good chance, since you killed them, that he doesn't know who you are from them either. Oh, that works. Cool. Do we know how many more there are? Would Nettie know, maybe? Why, do you think you can take them? Well, if they're as piss easy as the last Uh, two, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nettie said that there are three more. Oh, geez, I was thinking there was like dozens. No, they're so deadly. Not last time, I guess. <laughs> if the BM doesn't roll crap rolls, they're real deadly. So, are you going to take me up on my offer? I vote yes. Yeah, I reckon. I Why not? Yeah. He pulls four semi-tuxedos, you know, waiter tuxedos. Are those tuxedos? Do waiters wear tuxedos at fancy parties? I have no idea. <laughs> It's been a while since I've been to a wedding. I don't go to those kinds of parties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, my my casual soirees, I make them wear gold tuxedos, <laughs> you know, but that's just, that's just my house rule. <laughs> okay. He hands you these four tuxedos and tells you where the, the Red Herd's mansion is. Where were you keeping these? In his storage compartment. Okay, yeah, checks out. <laughs> no more questions. Are we not going to be able to have like our guns and stuff? It's going to look very suspicious, a waiter with a rocket launcher and a sniper rifle. Yeah, yeah, you won't be able to have your guns. Okay. Uh, this is my emotional support rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> they legally can't ask you any follow-up questions to that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes, you are going to have to stash your weapons. Uh. It's for the creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> but I presume, I mean, like, I, I, I could hide a few grenades about my person, surely. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Excellent. I'm going to wear one of those, you know, those gigantic chef's hats that's just full of grenades. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> All right, so everybody's putting on their tuxedos. 
Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you all head out there. You get to the mansion. It's very classic mansion type thing, you know, giant house, beautiful garden in the front. And then there's signs. Once you look past the gate that are pointing left to the gardens where the wedding will be held. And as you approach, there are two guards standing at the ready. Two guards guarding the garden. (laughs) One of them has a, a clipboard. We just want to try and bluff our way past the guards. What do you guys think? Would um, Stevio know the names of the people that we're supposed to be taking the place of, do you think? I know everything. He comes in over your Echo cast. Okay, tell us what names we're supposed to give. Uh, Let's see. Let's go. What would be a good name for a catering company? Food and that. Um, Incorporated. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe food, but said as a question, like food? Food? (laughs) i can't believe it's not food (laughs) some of it may be food (laughs) (laughs) tell them you're with food 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 Food? you have to say it right and i am a robot and not perfect with inflection (laughs) uh names hello my good man we're with food food Food. Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, oh, food right there. Okay, yeah, go on in. You can just go around to the back side of the, the mansion and there will be the tents there and you can get set up. Okay, thanks. Easy enough. Yeah. You walk on in and go around to the side. You see the wedding venue kind of set up, lots of chairs, really pretty flowers and hedges and topiaries Topiaries. and because you've got to have proper topiaries topiaries shaped like skags and racks and saurians i'm googling topiary i have no idea is that is that is that how american is that how americans pronounce it topiary (laughs) oh no how do do you say it topiary (laughs) Topiary. What? Topiary. For real? Yeah. Topiary? Topiary. (laughs) Topiaries. Which which is not funny. It's not funny at all. I apologize. (laughs) I'm sorry. You know, we... uh... Obviously, us Americans have perfected the English language. Absolutely. <laughs> ironed out. You ironed out all the kinks. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> we were like, oh, yeah. Those British people, the English, the thing that the language is named after, they got a good start. But let's finish this up. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we just did a rough draft and then handed it over to you guys. Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, so... Topiaries, uh, yeah. <laughs> Topiaries. <laughs> so, Topiaries. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so you see all this fancy stuff, and then you continue on to the back, and there are tables and tents set up with food trays and drink trays, and you know little hors d'oeuvres and champagne glasses. That's how you say champagne, right? Yeah, totally. Okay, good. Like lasagna? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the more fancy dressed ladies comes up to you and says, Oh, you're here. One of you needs to take drinks and prepare them, start filling glasses, and... Two of you need to work on the food, and another one uh, drinks too, I guess. I don't know. I thought there were only going to be three of you, but there's there's four of you. That's what you get with food. You always get, you know, extra. You go the extra mile. And you know, it's hire three, get one free. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great, great. Well, get to it. Who Does anyone have a particular preference? 
I mean, I, I like a drink. Claptrap interrupts you and says, Reach into your coat pocket. And I'm going to have you all roll... Roll your roll your initiative just for the fun of it. Okay. Fourteen. Oh my gosh. Four. Seven. Six. We are the dumbest bunch of catering staff. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, it's not that important. It's just to, to help me. Mercurius, you reach in and pull out a little baggie with some purplish powder. Tarquin and... Phaleon recognize it as the drug that was in... Oh, in the clothes factory. Yeah. Uh, Phaleon, you had a pretty good time with some of that, didn't you? Sure did. Mercurius, I'm going to have you give them a taste of their own medicine. That's iridium cane powder. So I need you to spike their drinks with it. Do I have to do the, the whole game where I pour it in one of the wine glasses and then mix them up? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. <laughs> Phaleon, you pull out bird seeds? I just need you to feed those to the birds behind the altar. When the ceremony concludes, the birds will fly, and I just want you to feed those birds this special, special seed. What's in this seed? Laxative. <laughs> You'll find out. I don't know how I feel about this one. <laughs> Do you feel a bit shit? You won't kill anyone. Good boy. You pull out an echo stone. I need you to replace the DJ's echo stone with this one. Okay. And then Tarquin, you pull out a folded piece of paper. The groom wrote his own vows. Well, I need you to replace them with this one. Nice. So pickpocket him and and sneak this one in. Cool beans. There you go. There's your assignment. (laughs) Okay. I do have a question about mine. Yes. Do I feed the birds now or later? You can feed them now. It's okay. Okay. Whenever you can. Before the ceremony. Gotcha. Okay, so hang on. The line, who's who's? Sorry, you go ahead. I was just going to say the lady said two to do drinks and two to do food, right? So Mercurius, yours is drink specific. Failure on <laughs> food, I suppose. <laughs> 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 um, mine, mine could be either. Yeah, and then good boy. I guess yours could be either either as well, couldn't you? Just to get to the DJ place. Yeah. I'll do food since there's already two for drinks. Okay. Wait, did you say yours was drinks? Mercurius was also drinks? I think Mercurius is definitely drinks, but I could I could go either way. So I guess I'll do drinks. And then you, you and Phaleon do food. Okay. Mercurius and Good Boy are doing drinks? No, Tarquin. me and... Tarquin, yeah. okay. Yeah. And then Good Boy and Phaleon are on drinks. Or on food. God dang it. <laughs> food, drink. And Riley is on crack. <laughs> Big <laughs> I've been getting high on my own supply. <laughs> well, you let's have Mercurius and Tarquin go up to the drinks and there's champagne bottles and champagne flutes. So you just got to pour them in there. Mine needs the groom specifically, so I was going to grab just a whole bottle of champagne and sort of go find the groom. You know, he's going to need some special, some special beverage. He's not going to need just one little glass, is he? Perfect. Yeah, that's a great idea. Okay, I do. I am now in possession of a champagne bottle. Okay. Do you know where you're? Where are you going to head towards? Um, I am going to. Hang on, so we out in the back gardens, basically, and there's all, like, marquees and tents and shit. Yeah. Yes. You're, like, behind the gar- behind the mansion a little bit, so you're not, you're out of view of the gardens because, you know, you, you don't want to see the help in the fancy area. No. Well, I'm just going to find the next nearest person and be like, hey, I've been requested to present this to the groom. Do you know where he is? 
Uh, yeah, he's inside the mansion in the in one of the rooms getting ready for the wedding. One of the rooms. Thanks, bud. That's helpful. I don't know where. Right. Do I look like I would know and be invited to the groom's room? If I wasn't just a mere caterer, if I was a vault hunter, I'd shoot you in the face. Well, good thing you're not a vault hunter and that you're just some poor man that has to rent a tux from his company and and serve the rich, huh? Good thing. In it, though. Right, well, I'm going to head into the mansion then. Mercurius, what are you doing with the champagne? Uh, I am definitely poisoning them. Okay. I'm just I'm just dumping powder in indiscriminately and uh, saying things like, uh, it's odorless, tasteless, uh, one drop is enough to kill a man. Uh, I forget exactly all the lines from Princess Bride. But <laughs> <laughs> the game of wits has begun. Uh, from your vantage point, you can see like towards the front a little bit and guests are starting to arrive. So, so you could take drinks out and you two are putting food on trays. Where is the, the DJ from where we are? Do you know? In the gardens. Uh, just... Just around the corner of the house, essentially. So I am going to take a tray with nothing on it (laughs) and uh, say, like, I'm going to serve the people on the dance floor. I'm going to dance my way out (laughs) on the dance floor. The fancy late, the head lady goes up to you and says, no, no, this won't do. And she grabs a tray with food on it and grabs your tray and gives you a food with tray. You have to take food out. I can understand why one of you is free now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So you start heading out there. Phaleon? Um, I grab a tray and I start going towards the back of the seating area. And the lady says, well, guests are arriving. Get out there. Feed. Drink the, Drink them. Feed them. You don't drink them. What would that be? It doesn't matter. Get out there and serve. All right. So you all are heading out there. Tarquin, you are entering the mansion. It's a very, very fancy mansion. You know, marble pillars and gold-lined railings. I don't know. I've never really been in a huge fancy mansion. Many leather-bound books. Many, many leather-bound books. (laughs) Rich mahogany. Hell of mahogany. (laughs) Yeah, buddy. (laughs) Uh, There's quite a few number of doors and nothing necessarily... There's like people inside kind of bustling around uh, trying to get ready. What kind of people? Servant people or guest people? Servant people. Okay. Um, excuse me, has any of you guys seen the groom? One stops and says, yeah, yeah, he's uh, you're going to go up the stairs, take a left, take a right, take a right, third door on the left, and then rushes off. Okay, well, would you believe I'm going to go up the stairs, take a left, take a right, take a right, and then third door on the left? Whoa, bravo, Okay. How does he do it? <laughs> All right. Uh, you go into the room and the oh, groom... Hang on, hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Backtrack. Maybe I should knock first. I'm not not a complete monster. Oh, there you go. One of the groomsmen opens the door. Oh, yes? Oh, forgive my intrusion, sir, but uh, this bottle of champagne is compliments of uh, my catering company for the groom. Oh, thank you. He reaches out to grab it for you to oh. hand it to him. <laughs> no, 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 sir. It's part of our silver service package. I, I may pour the drinks for you. Oh, okay. Uh, well, come on in. And he opens the door and you come in. And there's three groomsmen and then the groom is pacing back and forth. He's in a nicer tuxedo. So very easily distinguished. Is he fully dressed? He's like, oh, he's fully dressed. So he's not left his jacket with his speech in hanging around. Yeah, no. Okay. In his pocket. Never mind then. I'm going to go to the side. I'm going to put the bottle down. I'm going to pop the cork like a total expert. And I'm going to start pouring some glasses. While you're doing that, we'll just kind of do this in uh, the, the initiative order that you rolled. So, Mercurius, you've got your drinks that are drugged. 
And as you go out there, there are guests around. There is also a fountain of champagne in the middle. Oh dear, I guess I gotta poison that too, huh? Um, is that going to require some kind of uh, sleight of hand roll? Yeah, there are people all around. They would definitely see you putting in some powder. So I'm serving drinks. Yeah, people are coming up to you, grabbing the glasses. Yeah, lovely, lovely. I'm I'm so good at this. Maybe I should have done this instead of being a vault hunter. It's so easy. <laughs> yeah, I do believe I will try to poison the fountain very sneakily. Okay, roll a sneak check. That is a three. I'm busted. One of the guests looks at you, walks up. What are you? What is that? What are you putting in there? It's uh, um, that is a demineralizing agent. See, because it's out in the open like this, it could get um. Uh, various nasty flavors. Roll a talk check. You don't want to mix all those nasty air minerals in there. That is a nine. So 11. Oh, okay. Cause it kind of looked like a, it kind of looks like a Iridi- iridium cane. <laughs> you too. You're so funny. Uh, I wish I haven't seen iridium cane since my high school days. Oh, all right, all right. Well, hey, if you if you happen to find any, let me know, because uh, I'd be willing to, to, to take some off your hands. Oh, for sure, bro. I'll hook you up. Nameless NPC man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name's Dave Afrino. <laughs> Dave Afrino, all right, hell yeah. He dips a glass into the Chapagna fountain and then walks away. Okay. All right, and then, yeah, you finish pouring in your, your powder. I did it. I demineralize these uh, spirits. Okay, and then we go to Phaleon. You are at the... So when you say back of the seating area, what do you mean? I thought that's where I was supposed to be. As you approach, there's the seats, you know, all lined up and facing the altar. And then behind the altar is a cage with some a bunch of doves in it. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go behind the altar. Are you going to try and sneak over there or just, just walk, walk with the with the food just nonchalantly? The lady comes up to you, the fancy lady. What are you doing? Go serve the guests. There's no guests over here. And she points you towards the party. Okay, I start to go over there, but then I'm going to try and sneak back where the birds are, okay. the doves. Okay, roll sneak. I think that's a it's the vault symbol. Oh, Dang. Nat 20. Okay, that's a nat 20. Plus my three, so 23. <laughs> nat 20 will just pretty much always be a success. Yeah, you you sneak the crap out of that. Those birds don't even know you're coming. You get to the cage, and it, it you know it's a it's a nice looking cage with doves in it. Okay. I like start throwing the bird seed but telling Pigeon not to eat the bird seed just in case. <laughs> Pigeon looks at you, looks at the seed. Like, don't do it. Puts its head down. Oh, oh my goodness. I didn't even connect that, you know, that you got the bird one and you have a bird. I thought you did that on purpose. <laughs> I thought you did too. <laughs> no, it was all, I did it randomly. That was why I had you roll initiative rolls. It was meant to be. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, the doves in there start eating the, the bird seed, gathering and just pecking at it. Uh, good boy, you are at the dance floor holding a food a tray of food. There's not a lot of people dancing at this moment, and the DJ is really just setting up, prepping for the wedding at this point. Oh, okay. Dang it, that ruins my plan. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna walk up to the DJ and say like. I was uh, I was told to uh, feed you first so that you're not eating during the wedding, <laughs> you know, because of manners. Oh, very kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. And he grabs a couple pieces of food and starts eating it off your tray. Okay. And then uh, I should have thought of this earlier. This is not me saying this. In character, this is me actually saying this. <laughs> I kind of, this is kind of funny. Uh, then I'm going to uh, fake trip 
and dump all of my uh, tray of food onto his table. Where is his Echo Stone thing on the table? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to fake trip somehow now that I've been standing still for a minute. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to dump all the food onto his table. Um, And I'm going to say, oh, I'm so so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm going to scoop everything up and I'm going to exchange our Echo Stones. Okay, roll a sneak check. <laughs> it's a critical miss. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> he grabs the stone as you try and take it. What are you doing, mate? You got my you got my my stone there, my echo stone. I can't do the music without this. And yes, I change accents because because I can, okay? <laughs> I'm a DJ. I'm a sentry. He's a chameleon. And then he takes more food. Get the hell away from here. I, I don't want you messing up my 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 nice set, my sweet set. I can't believe the Don gave me this opportunity. Uh, okay. So, oh man, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> it's hard when you can't just re- resort to shooting him in the face. Yeah. Can I try again for another thing or... Uh, He's holding the stone now, so it's more secure. Uh, All right, I'm gonna say, oh, I'm I'm really sorry. The the Don was his name. Don told me to uh, that he wanted this played tonight specifically, Uh, and I hold up my Echo Stone. Okay, do a talk check. (laughs) The thing you're worst at. Yeah, uh, so that's uh, 15 minus 4, 11. He takes it, hesitantly. Uh, well, I'll give it a listen. I'm not, no promises, I'll play it, though. And so you can tell he's, like, being very insincere about him going to play it. He's got his artistic integrity, and he shoves it off to the side and puts his, his Echo Stone back down. For now, I'm going to go to Tarquin. Uh, right, so as I'm, you know, handing the groom his his glass, I'm, you know, like, congratulations on your big day. I, I hope you've got your speech somewhere safe. Oh, yeah, I've got it right here. Reaches into his pocket and pulls it out and holds it in front of you. I, I worked really hard on this. I'm really proud of it. Oh, but I'm so nervous. And he puts it back into his pocket. What are you most nervous about? Are you nervous about like standing up in front of people? Are you nervous about saying the wrong thing? Are you worried that your speech will be shit? What's on your mind, fella? Polly is just such a passionate, passionate woman. And I worry that that I'm not good enough. That, you know, and if I'm not good enough, then the Don, he'll kill me. That's for sure. So I've got to be good enough for her. It's kind of a mix of a lot of things. Have you uh, got your first dance? You like? Are you? Can you dance? Oh, <laughs> can I dance? I can dance like a skag having a heart attack. Oh yeah, I can dance. Okay, well at least that's good. So it's just the speech that you uh, that you need to make sure you nail. Would you believe before I fell on hard times and became a, a lowly catering person, I actually used to be a professional speechwriter. If you want, I could, you know, just take a look over it and just make sure there's no, like, awkward grammar, no crazy Americanisms that are going to make y'all sound really weird. Mm -hmm. Um, I could just... Topiary. Yeah, I could just have a read over it if you want. Free of charge, of course. Well, uh, roll a talk check, of course. You got to roll a talk check. Of course. Um, Eleven. Man, that was so convincing, though. I'm going to... That would normally be on the fence. He said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll give it to you. But be, be kind, but be fair, be harsh. And, you know, I really want to impress, really want to impress her and her dad. Just give me, in one word, give me the kind of vibe that you're aiming for. And I'll, I'll make sure you absolutely hit that. Well, you know, I'll be the son-in-law to the Don of the Moth, the Red Hand, or the Red Herd, and... And that's a lot of pressure. So I want to, you know, convey to Polly that I'm a good man for her and also to the Don that I'm a strong man. 
Okay, but uh, you were a bit simple. I said one word. Yeah, <laughs> that was all hyphenated. <laughs> ah, I see. You're a fellow, a fellow master of punctuation. Okay. Um, I tell you what. You finish get you finish getting ready, um, and when you when you come down, I will discreetly uh, bring you a drink and hand you the revised speech. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm trusting you. Absolutely. If you if you need me, um, my name is Christopher the Caterer. Christ- Christopher the Christopher Caterer. Christopher the Caterer. Yes. CC. Can I call you CC for short? And that's what all my friends call me. Perfect. Well, that's weird that your friends like you just are you hang saying out with your friends and are you saying caterers can't have friends? Is that like no, no? I'm not saying that, but it, you know, you would be friends outside of catering, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, my friends don't call me uh, blacksmith. Uh, <laughs> blacksmith Ben. I should. I should hope not. That's fucking racist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Anyway, yeah. Okay. You know what? Why don't I need to hear a little something? Why don't you give me a little bit of of a sample of something you might write? Just I want to make sure. You know, I got to make sure. Got to do my dues to to make sure these vows are right. Okay. <clears throat> so, right, hang on. You just you want to you want to show that you're worthy of marrying the Don's daughter. Right. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. First of all, thank you for all coming here today to celebrate the union of me. What's your name? What's your name, mate? Ben. Ben. Uh, to Polly, the delightful, um, beautiful, radiant daughter of the Don, Mr. Keys. Uh, I have often found myself aspiring to be part of such a paramount family in uh, Geohold uh, who command respect, who demonstrate nothing but honour. Can I stop now? Do you get the vibe? Is that, is that all right? Roll a, roll a top check. Oh my Christ. It's a one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I was really hoping it would be a limerick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I- I just, I am Ben, so why would I call myself Ben? A few notes here. Uh, Polly, she's great. Uh, Mr. Key is just Mr. Key, not Mr. Keys. My mistake. I'm worried that you don't know enough about our relationship. Do you know what, Ben? You're absolutely right. Why don't you give me just some bullet points? Yeah, you give me the you give me the gist, but I'll make sure that it flows. Oh man, I don't know. I gave I'm. I'm pretty worried here. I I think I'll keep this. I've, Are you sure? I mean, I've I catered. From my heart. I've catered a lot of these weddings, um, and fathers-in-law they can get pretty angry if the speech isn't good. Like so the last wedding I was at, the groom got fucking kneecapped because the speech was not good enough. Uh, do, do you want to risk that? Oh boy! Uh, and I bet that person wasn't the don of the red herd. So no. That was just a regular. That was just a regular guy. All right, roll another talk check, man. I was gonna. That was a good argument. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's about to get even worse. It's a three. Basically, I just dribble down my front into his glass of champagne, and then shrug. <laughs> <laughs> he puts the folded up thing back in his pocket and says, "I'll tell. I, it's from my heart, and I think that the Don will recognize that. And and Polly, of course, Polly. Yeah, yeah she's important too." To your funeral. Do you, are you holding a glass of champagne for him? Yes. I did just okay. dribble in it though. So maybe he doesn't <laughs> want it. Did he see that? I don't know. Yeah, he saw it because okay. it was a three. He definitely saw it. He says, well, why don't you go grab me a new piece, new champagne glass and, uh, and then, then you can get out of here. Like, like get back to serving the, the guests. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Shit. Shit. <laughs> we'll go back to to good boy. So I'm going to try to sneak up without the DJ noticing me and uh, switch the two echo stones that he has sitting on the table. Are you coming from like behind? <laughs> yes. I think I'm going to try sneaking up from behind and then crawling under the table. And like reaching my hand up. 
Go ahead and roll a sneak check. Ooh, it's a 17. Plus oh, okay. one. So 18. Okay, you, yeah, you crawl up to the table, grab the Echo Stone and replace it. Yep. And then I just hang out under the table. <laughs> You're just going to stay there for, the, for a while? Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll go back to Tarquin then. I'm going to head back down to the, like, kitchens and where all the food and stuff's being prepared. And I want to find, basically, one of the empty storage boxes that the food was brought in. Can I find one of those? Well, let's do a search check. Uh, 17. Nice, yes. You find exactly what you're looking for. Where were those rolls a minute ago? Absolutely. It's quite a large box, large enough for myself to sit inside. So I find myself a quiet little corner. I cut a little slot. Think like a like a post box type situation, a mailbox, sorry, uh, situation. And on on the front in um, marker pen, I'm going to write speech checker 3000. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to sit in the corridor with the box over me. Like, so that when the groom comes out, he will <laughs> post his speech into the speech checker 3000, and I will return the new speech for him. <laughs> this better work. What, this is genius. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you've moved the box somewhere where he would he would be passing by? Yeah, so I'm in the corridor, like, you know, on the landing. So his room, I presume his bedroom or whatever, where he's getting ready, he'll come out. And then between there and the stairs will be the speech checker 3000. It's just like a wooden crate, right? With a... Yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. With a, with, a slot, with a slot cut out of it and speech checker 3000 written on the front in like a cool font, though. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Can you roll calligraphy? Yeah, roll a <laughs> calligraphy check, right? A calligraphy check. Oh, I'm just kidding anyways. <laughs> Good, because I got a five, so I probably would have <laughs> spelt most of the words wrong. <laughs> the C is backwards. <laughs> it's got t- t- too many E's, like speech. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how's everybody doing? Did you get all your jobs done? I'm not going to lie to you, Stevio. It's not looking good. But I've got one more. I've got one more ace up my sleeve. Okay. Well, yours is very important. It's 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 one of the key things that needs to be done. How about the rest of you? I fed the birds, so we're good. Excellent. I I can't answer right now. I'm undercover, <laughs> literally. And what about you, Mercurius? You can't hear me. Okay, yeah. Uh, where am I? Am I still... Are there guests around me? Yeah, I mean, you're serving food, right? Of course, For of drinks. Course. You're serving drinks. So I will speak discreetly into my lapel. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, got, I, I got the drinks taken care of and the, and the big fountain, too. Perfect. Uh, if there's anything else you guys want to prank while you're there, you totally can. Is there anything else you guys can think of that, for a prank that you would want to do? You can be thinking of that. While while I resolve Tarquin's thing. Can you cut one of those, like, ass hatches into the wedding dress? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. See, you can communicate while you're waiting in the box. Yeah. Go ahead and discuss <laughs> as a party. I don't know. I, I'm not very creative. I was going to go find a bucket and just fill it with water and put it inside a door. A door, you know. Put it on top of the door. <laughs> the old classic. Never go wrong with the classic. I want to try uh, tying the DJ shoelaces together. Perfect. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, roll a sneak check. Go ahead. You're right there. You're in the prime spot. <laughs> oh god. Oh why? It's a one. <laughs> no, dude. Do you accidentally tie your own shoelaces? <laughs> <laughs> he immediate. He feels something and kicks you. Dealing four points of damage to your health. <laughs> Not to your shields, to your health. <sighs> okay. And then looks under the table. What the hell are you doing under there? Yes, I've got a new accent. Uh, people were making fun of my dancing and got embarrassed. Oh my hell. Get out of here. Get, get, get. Okay. I guess I leave then. 
That would have been so good, Matt. <laughs> Damn it. Is there like a runner on the aisle? Yes. Okay, I I try and kick it so there's just like a little bump. <laughs> Do a interact check. Uh not twenty. Oh my gosh. Okay. These rolls. It is like the perfect bump. You know that people will be tripping over that. <laughs> uh any other pranks that that Oh, you know what? Let's let's resolve Kyle's. Let's find the nearest exit uh, and kind of prop the door open with a bucket of water over the top of so, it. So first person to run through a, gets doused. Let's do a search check. 19. Oh, wow. Okay. So you find a bucket and water. It's already filled. It's- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's already on top of the door, right? I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um and then which door do you want? You know, there's... I'm thinking whatever would be the m- most likely quick exit. Well, you're outside. I'm outside. Oh, yeah. so I got to go The wedding inside. is an outdoor thing. Of course. Uh, <laughs> I forgot we were outside. <laughs> I'm very good at this. Okay, so maybe not the main entrance. It'll be found out there because we're all outside. Let me find let's find just like a side exit, maybe like staff entry. Okay. And I hope that I hope that Tarquin doesn't end up going that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> hey, this door's booby trapped. Okay, uh, roll another interact check to set up the trap. Seventeen. Nice. Okay. Yeah, you get the bucket up there. It's placed well. You know that when someone opens it all the way, it's gonna fall right on them. Wow. <laughs> Tarquin, you hear the groomsmen and the br- groom heading out their door and walking past you. I was probably just going to do something like, beep boop, complimentary speech check, sir. He's, he, he goes up to it and he says, oh, uh, complimentary? Uh, how do I know you're good? What do you do? Beep boop, complimentary speech check. Errors include grammatical errors. Poor vocabulary choices. Shit jokes. <laughs> Roll a talk check. <laughs> talk with please. And that one? Well, I got two, but I've got a minus one mod. Uh, yeah, I'm good. I'm not going to give my my speech to a wooden box. He keeps walking. His speech is in his right pocket. Okay, I'm going to throw the box off, and I'm going to run, and I'm just going to twat him on the back of the head. <laughs> Okay, all right, damage check. Actually, do an interact, yeah, do just a normal interact check. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's a natu- that's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh... <laughs> you don't even make it all the way out of the box. You go to get out of the box and hit your head and knock yourself out. So you are passed out in the, the speech checker box. Brilliant. All of Tarquin's stuff had like the best setup and the best dialogue. (laughs) (laughs) And it keeps failing. Oh my god. (laughs) I mean, that's the fates, right? Oh, jeez. It's not me being mean because I honestly want all of this to succeed. Yeah, what did you do to (laughs) RNGesus? All right, so the other three of you that aren't passed out in a box see the groomsman and the groom coming out and and just going and interacting with guests. I guess that's it right now. They're just kind of interacting while more and more guests come. It's getting busier and busier. The DJ's almost all set up. People are starting to head towards their seats. We're all in touch on the echo machine, right? So, like, can can one of us get suspicious and go to check on him? Yeah, if you want to. I would like to do that. I'd be like, we haven't heard from Tarquin in a while. He's not answering my phone calls. So you're trying to, like, get Tarquin's attention? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to. Come in, Tarquin. You roll a talk check. We'll see if it's enough to, like, kind of wake him up, to bring him to. That's a 10. But I get uh, plus two talk, so that's a 12. Tarquin starts to to come back to consciousness a little bit and then is more suddenly brought when someone picks up the crate that he's in and starts <laughs> pushing it down the stairs a little bit. And so it's like bump, bump, bump at each step. Bump, bump, bump. So he's getting jostled 
even more awake as he goes down the stairs in this... It was a food box originally. Uh, beep, beep. Complimentary speech check, sir? Oh, madam. They drop the box and it tumbles down the stairs because you startled them and you take four, four damage to your health. And the crate opens up and you come sliding out of it. What, to, to what nature of person am I presented with? There are just servants. There's a servant. Uh, kind Servants are bustling around. They stop for a second and look at you and then shake off and keep going. But the person on the stairs looks and says, what were you doing in there? Um, I was sent to check if there was any last, like lost bits of food just in there, like that hadn't been taken out. Why were you saying, were you saying speech check? No. Okay, roll a talk check. It's a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to go, I, this isn't right. I'm going to go tell the madam. And he goes down the stairs past you and starts heading out the entrance, the the servant entrance, and a bucket of water drops on his head, and it's covering his head, and he trips down some stairs and is knocked out at the bottom of the stairs. Ha! Got him! <laughs> so now you, uh, yeah, nobody's really paying any mind to you now. Okay, I'm going to go back out to the general wedding and find some of my teammates and... Hopefully they can help me when they realize how bad I fucked this up. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody's kind of just wandering around with their trays at this point. Did you pick up another tray, good boy, to take around for food? Sure. Yeah, let's say yes. And phaleon has got her her tray of drinks, and Mercurius has his tray of drinks, so everybody's in fairly close proximity uh, going around. around to the to the guests, giving them food and drink. There's a couple people seated, so it's getting closer to time for the wedding to start, uh, but like the groom and the priest aren't there or anything like that. Well, who can I see? Who's closest to me? I'm just going to go to the either Phaleon, Mercurius, or Good Boy. Who's closest? Good Boy would be closest because he was kind of around the DJ. Okay, right. <sighs> Before. Good boy. I've I've messed up. I didn't manage to swap over the vows. Okay. I have an idea. Do we know where the groom is right now, Riley? Roll a search check. You can look about. Both of you can roll one. Tarquin can roll a search check too if he'd like. 17. Oh, good, because I got a six. <laughs> okay. Uh... Tarquin sees the groom over by the DJ, not far from you, talking to the DJ. Oh, man. Uh-oh. Okay, well, he's got his speech. <laughs> he's got his speech in his back pocket, but he knows what I look like. So I can't go anywhere near him. Okay. Uh, well, you just be ready. And I'll create a distraction. Okay. So I'm going to go over to... <laughs> Gonna go over to the groom and I'm gonna yell Flash Mob and start dancing as crazy as I can in front of him. <laughs> okay. Uh do uh do an interact check for for dancing. It's a 13 plus 3, it's a 16. Okay, yeah. He you get his attention and the DJs, and the DJs. They're both startled at first, and then the DJ says, What are you doing back over here? Uh, get out of here. Get it. Go on. Get it. Shoo. Get it. But you're, you're just dancing like crazy, right? Yep, just going crazy. Which is weird, because the music that's playing is like Pachelbel's Canon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to attempt to swap the speeches then while they're all looking at good boy dancing. Uh, yeah, roll a sneak. Um, I got 16. Yeah, you go in and you swap the speeches out of his pocket. And then I'm going to I'm gonna back away, in, you know, just in case he turns around or whatever. Uh, <laughs> are you still just dancing like crazy? Oh, wait, I, I, I will give him a nod saying I've done it and then he can like immediately just stop and walk off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, that's what I do. <laughs> the groom... That was weird. Uh, yeah, he's been hanging around me all day. 
I can't, I have no idea what's up with this fella. Uh, all right. So yeah, you all are doing your thing. Do you want to just hang out serving guests? Do you want to try and pull any last minute pranks off? I think it would be safer if I did not try any more last minute pranks. <laughs> okay. The groom heads up to the altar and someone else is standing there, the priest, and people start to come and sit down more and more. Uh, where do you guys want to position yourselves? Do you... Don't we usually like, well, I mean, I'm just going to stand, you know, with my back against the wall like a, like an unconcerned little servant. Does everyone else want to do that too? Yeah, it works. Being yeah. inconspicuous. I'm going to say that I like sat down right in the middle of the aisle and somebody had to come grab me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the madam, right, the lady who's in charge of the wait staff comes up to you and says, oh, next time just don't give us anyone for free, okay? She grabs you by the arm and leads you to where the other staff is standing. Uh, and then they're all, you know, everybody's settled. And they put on the music, the DJ, or the groom gives a little nod to the DJ, and the DJ puts in the Echo Stone, and it starts playing, and it's nice music. It's like, it's like, do, 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 and it's Claptrap kind of singing it, but it still sounds fairly nice. And then Claptrap goes in. That wasn't a prank. I just really take my music career seriously, and I wanted them to have something nice. <laughs> and then the bride starts, or, you know, well, Flower Girl goes down, and she kind of stumbles over one part of the the carpet, the aisle, and trips. And then, a you know, a big puff of petals comes out, and there's just a clutter of that, and more people go, and everyone kind of just keeps stumbling over this same part. And then finally, the bride comes and starts walking down the aisle with her dad, the Don, and they get to that bump, and the bride trips on that spot, and she almost catches herself, but then she slips where those petals had fallen from the flower girl, and and so she slips, and she falls onto her side, and everyone kind of is snickering, trying not to laugh. And her dad rolls his eyes and looks really annoyed and upset, helps her up to her feet. And there's a tear down her gown and she swears under her breath. And then he walks her up and hands her off to the groom and then sits down. <laughs> Bravo. Well pranked. <laughs> and then the... They start and they go, thank you everyone for coming to the wedding of Polly and Ben. The bride and groom has have prepared their speeches, their own vows. So uh, go ahead, Ben. Why don't you start? Well, I'm not as good with words as Polly, so I wrote mine down. He reaches into his pocket, pulls it out, unfolds it. When I'm with you, all my worries fade away. The world is heavy, but you relieve my load. And when you take my load, I know that you do it with a smile. I take your load with a smile too, because when we're each, when we're taking each other's loads, there's nothing we can't do. I love you, Gina. I mean, I mean Polly. I mean Polly. Who the hell? What, Gina? No, no. I didn't. I, I swear I didn't write. This doesn't seem right. I didn't write this. Oh, so. You, What's what's going on between you and Gina? And she looks at one of the bridesmaids and just punches her. And Ben tries to pull her off and she gets knocked back and he hits the dove cage and the doves get freed and they start flying and just pooping everywhere. Poop, poop, poop. Like as if they were had been eating laxatives, just like and it's all over the guests and the guests are drunk and high at this point and they just are laughing and smiling and grabbing the poop and being like look at the colors and throwing the poop in the air like it's confetti it is this is the best wedding ever and they're, it's just a big poop party uh, and it's it's an absolute mess and the groom is knocked out on the side after he hit into the cage and Polly is beating the crap out of Gina and the 
Don stands up from his chair, pounds a cane on the ground. Enough! Enough! Ah, this simply won't do. And everyone shuts up. People are still high and, uh, and, and giggling at all the colors. He says, the wedding is off. This schmuck is not worthy of my daughter. And he walks back into the house. And a couple of guards grab Ben to, and drag him behind him. As, as Ben is dragged past me, can I just subtly say, I bet you wish I checked that speech now, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> he looks up half dazed at you like, oh no, I should have. Was I drunk when I wrote that? Uh, yeah, and so then the Don and the guy go into the, Ben go into the house, and the everybody's just kind of like left there, not sure what to do. So this is a problem because uh, now we can't ask for a favor. Oh yeah, he said the wedding's off, right? Yeah, we got to call Stevio and say, uh, "What the fuck, man." <laughs> Oh, oh. Well, yeah, that was some pretty legendary pranks, but uh, now we're kind of screwed. What do you mean? Well, we were going to ask uh, ask the Don to call off his jackpots as a favor for the, because he has to grant a favor on his daughter's wedding day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it was worth it. You guys are going to die, but it was worth it. Whoa. Yeah, it was kind of worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. I can't believe everybody was throwing poop and everyone's so drunk, high, covered in poop, oh, <laughs> taking loads. Oh, I am a master prankman. Okay. Out of character, did you write that whole taking loads speech? I did. That was <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> that was ridiculous. <laughs> I am rather proud of it. Kimmy kept turning towards me last night while I was writing it and being like, what are you doing? What are you writing? I'm working on something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, my was... masterpiece. <laughs> the stuff of legends. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is my starry, starry night. This is, this is the <laughs> pinnacle of Riley right here. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, you're in the... You're in his mansion. I don't know. You could always just go talk to him if you wanted. Everyone's pretty distracted with the going on. May not be a total loss. I don't know. I think we should at least go talk to him. That's out of character that I'm saying that. I mean, he's probably going to be really angry that the whole day has gone to shit. And what do we want? We want to ask him to call the jackbots off, right? Yeah, that was the, the whole point. I mean, if I was him, my immediate question would be, what are you doing dressed as caterers at my daughter's wedding? Like, that would that would be ringing some alarm bells. It would be very suspicious. Like, oh, this whole wedding got, like, turned into a shit show, and here's these strangers posing as waiters and waitresses. Like, uh, Yeah. Yeah, we should go talk to Randy. I was going to say that we could, uh, we could double-cross Stevie-O and say, like, we know who did this. Okay, did we bring our normal clothes? Where are our normal clothes? What would you have done with them? You could do anything. You could be wearing them on underneath or... <laughs> Just rip off the waiter clothes and we're all kitted out to the teeth underneath. <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you guys. I don't know. We didn't establish that. So we can go... We can uh, retroactively make it whatever you want. I think either... Well, we should have access to them because then we can change into our normal clothes and then go and say hey, we know who did this to your wedding, which will be less suspicious because we're not dressed as catering staff from the <laughs> wedding. We could also always just like steal clothes from guests who are tripping balls on the floor. That is true. But then we don't want to look like wedding guests. I mean, we need to make it look like we just turned up, not that we were at the wedding at all, right? Oh, right. yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Okay, let's go get changed. I think, are you guys okay with that? Everybody cool? Yeah. 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 Although are we so if we're gonna say we know who did this, if we hand him Stevio, won't Stevio just be like, Yeah, but I ordered them to do all the pre-? like what's to stop him from dropping us in the shit as well? Oh yeah. 
He's a claptrap. Nobody believes claptraps. <laughs> <laughs> says says Racist. us who've been following following his orders like all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look how that turned out though. <laughs> There's a awesome. reason why nobody brilliantly, brilliantly. <laughs> oh man! Or we find we go back, we kill Stevio, and then we present him already dead and be like, "This is the guy that trashed your wedding. We've dealt with it for you. As a favor, why don't you call off the jackbots?" I'm down for killing a claptrap because it won't let you do that in the games. <laughs> <laughs> Except for in Robo Revolution. Oh man, I did not know that. You kill tons in there. All I'm thinking is like, what we need, what's going to most likely endear the Don to us, and what's least likely to drop us in the shit. And for that, Stevio needs to be silenced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he did kind of double cross us. Yeah, that's my that's my vote. That's my plan. I reckon. Okay, I'm. Willing to go along with that. Yeah, ven- vengeance is good for me. I'm down for vengeance. All right. Then, uh, so you're heading back to Randy's Brew Inn? Yes. Uh, you get there, and Randy is at the bar. No sign of Stevio. Hey, Randy, where's Stevio? He left a few minutes ago. Did he say where he's going? Uh, he said you guys were coming to kill him and that he didn't want to be anywhere near you. <laughs> Shit, we left, it, we left our Echo Stones on, didn't we? Well, that is a patently us thing to do. (laughs) (laughs) And then he pops in on your Echo Stones and says, You don't have to kill me. I can help you. Start talking. Well, why don't you just kill the jackpot? You already killed two of them. True, but then we would have just wasted a whole day pissing about at the wedding. (laughs) But it was so good. So good. I had a good time. I mean... Maybe the real treasure was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, you want to be friends with me because if we're enemies, then you get a shit wedding. <laughs> um, yeah, he's a pretty legendary prankster. I used to be the entertainment for the Don, and uh, and so I, I happen to know a bit about the the. Jackbot. So I can help you find two of them. But there's another one. There's three more, isn't there? There is. The third one is a lot trickier. Or fifth one. I mean, you killed two of them. So I guess this is the third and the fourth, and then the fifth is trickier. You know, there's semantics about this all. It's a very tricky, delicate situation. But I, as far as I see it, I owe you guys. Well, that's, that's good enough for me. A little admission of... Uh, uh, Apology. Yeah, I suppose. For screwing us over. So, yeah. yeah and, and, yeah, we could take a couple of jackpots, right? Like Nettie said, they were all so badass, but of course you would. And plus, we were, there was only two teams of two when we fought the others. If it's four against one, or even four against two, we're still going to... The odds are in our favor. I imagine if somebody was recording to the or recording this to have somebody listen to later, that would make for a pretty interesting uh, story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, good boy! Some of your ideas are so crazy. <laughs> Where does he come up with this stuff? <laughs> okay, yeah, fine, I agree. Okay, let's go hunt some jackpot. Thank you for listening to Friend and Foe Adventure Co. If you're interested in other projects that some of us are doing, then you could go check out YouTube. Kyle does Mecha Mac Music. Just search for that channel. Phil does a podcast called Organized Fun with an S because he's British, where he plays board games and then reviews them. And then I do the Board Game Community Show where I have casual conversations with people in different places throughout the board game community. If you enjoyed the podcast, share it with your friends, your family, whoever you think would enjoy it. Share it on your social media to the world and let others know about it. And if you really want to help us out, you can also rate and review it on Apple Podcasts. That helps it get seen by randos out there, pop up in their recommendations. 
Hey, and if you didn't like it, share it with your enemies and then you'll have the last laugh. I make plenty of mistakes while playing this. It's a fairly new game and I'm fairly new to RPGs, but we have a lot of fun doing it and we are learning as we go. So I'll get better as we go. This will only go up, I'm sure. If you are interested in trying out Bunkers and Badasses for yourself, then you can. Go to nerdvanagames.com and you can buy the source book and start having your own adventures. You can also follow us on Twitter at FFAdventureCo. All right. Bye.